hear that? Recording in progress. And then I got to admit a lot of people, how I, by the way, this is Alex Bennett, and this is our little Monday get together with some friends, people we enjoy being with. Okay, here we go. Let me admit who's here already. Um, Jeff Stein's here, Rick Sheckman, Charlie Wallace, um, Vernon Nunn is here. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's, that's good for starters, I guess. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Having some coffee. How y'all doing today? Good. Yeah, yeah. I already had a long Sunday talk today finally. with Jackie, so I have nothing to say to him. Uh, no, I got nothing to say either. Yeah, yeah. Um, except that he doesn't go out much because, well, quite frankly, why is there a reason to go out? Well, you know, look at Colin Powell. He was vaccinated. And look what happened. Yeah, yeah, but they say that he actually had some other problems. Well, he was elderly, let's call it. He was elderly, yeah. but he also had had, uh, what, uh, cancer? Yeah, the form of blood cancer. So his immune system was severely compromised already. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. But, but you know what they're going to say? They're going to go, oh, see, he got vaccinated. See what happened? Colin Powell's dead. He's yeah. vaccinated. But all these unvaccinated idiots kept coming around him. Yeah. A lot more unvaccinated people. Unvaccinated be dead a year ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. What a world we live in, huh? Yeah. yeah. People don't want to do anything about it. So, uh, how are you? Hey, yeah, look. I've got I've got polio now because you know I didn't want to get vaccinated 50, 60 years ago, whatever right. it was. Right. You know, most people today don't yeah. even know what polio is. Yeah. And they don't understand it, how we literally wiped out. A disease on the entire face of the earth doing exactly what we're doing now for COVID, you know? So, what have you, you know? So, uh, what the hell? You know, I mean, my, my way of believing, they said that the majority of people who are dying now because they didn't get vaccinated are all Republicans. So, should I give a shit? <laughs> nope. You know, um, thin out the herd, you know. Oh, you know, Texas is right at the border. If you want to succeed, goodbye. Nice knowing you. You know something? I actually, one of these people that uh, really felt years ago that I wish those states had seceded. You know, then we could we could have all the fun and they could do whatever they would be doing with their little rebel flag and so on. They would have gone bankrupt. What? They would have gone bankrupt. Most of the southern states take more money from the federal treasury than they put in. Well, a, a good example, there's some law, uh, Cuomo used to gripe about it, that there's some kind of law where we pay out money to other states, and like Mitch McConnell's state is one of the biggest people that gets money from us in yeah. order to survive. You know, so. you know, like, again, they talk about the Alamo. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Mexico might have had a better case about that war oh, yeah in what respect well that the texans were slavers were i can't even explain it but there are books about how the alamo was not this remember the alamo it was so great you know well, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that part of Texas supposed to be supposed to be part of Mexico? Isn't that what the claim was? Yeah. And that basically it was being stolen away from Mexico by these gringos. American settlers. The settlers, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. all for giving Texas back to Mexico. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, the Charlie. Whole state. Excuse me. We, what we'll do is we'll we'll airlift you yeah. out of there before that happens. Okay. You know, it's in Florida. It's, it's right by the hour. border there. So let's just cut it off. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know me, I was for getting rid of Florida years ago. I figured and, and also what, what's gonna happen with Florida anyway, so we don't really have to worry about it, is that Florida. It's going uh, to disappear with well, the no, water rising. Yeah, right. The water is rising because of 
global warming. And eventually, everything, I think, below Orlando will be gone. Is that, is that going to be like a circumcision since it's America's <laughs> penis? <laughs> well, I, when I was doing my ill-fated show in, uh, in um, Florida, when I was in Miami, I said, has, it, it, I'm sure you've all noticed that this state looks like a giant penis. <laughs> I said, in fact, I-95, which is the road that goes through, is, is, is like a giant vein <laughs> going through Florida. And then there's the Florida Keys. <laughs> I don't even want to say what they look like in respect to the penis. <laughs> and then I wondered why they didn't like me there. Yeah. <laughs> did you uh, did you come up with the nickname Flaccid Florida? Flaccid Florida? No, 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 no. But it, it, it is a state that looks like a penis. I'm surprised because it looks like a penis that it wasn't it literally created by uh, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> oh, my because, God. <laughs> because everything he creates has some kind of a penis involved. Have you seen the Amazon logo? What does that look like? Well, they tell you the logo is A to Z, and I still can't understand what that means. Yeah, everything from A to Z. And that's, that's it looks like a no, penis, penis to me. Looks like a half erected penis. Well, that rock, that rocket ship is ridiculous. It's got a well, head no, off I'm not, I'm not mad about the rocket because, as a Jew, it is circumcised. <laughs> well, so are his paper bags. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Gee, I guess I wonder. I wonder if I'm going to not be able to get this show sponsored today. Okay. <laughs> like you need the money, huh? Yeah, like I need the money. Well, well have I, you ever I, tried to open one of those Amazon plastic bags? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, those things are horrible. It says it says rip right here, <laughs> and then it, right just they don't doesn't, rip. <laughs> it doesn't rip right there. You know. I just get a pair of scissors and scissor it open. You know. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, my teeth. I do. I still have my teeth are good enough oh, that I can still go like that and then do the rip. But I, oh, I I've gotten quite a few of those lately, and I've kind of learned how to do it. But you have to do it above where it says tear here, and then it'll go pretty easily. But scissors. So here's what happened. Here's what happened over the weekend. Uh, uh, Saturday, I go to make my morning cup of coffee. After Marjorie has already made hers. Okay. Two. Two. Two cups. And I go to make it, and all of a sudden, there's a little thing that says your, uh, your whole thing is clogged. Uh, it's this whole message that I've never seen before. It was like longer than most. And it said, you know, they, there's a, a problem with water receiving, blah, 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 can't get through. I don't know what it means. So I open up my, uh, my uh, uh, Keurig. And I learned how to uh, get uh, get open up that area where you know you put the cup in. You can actually get that out of there, okay? Mm. And I get it out of there, and there's this little thing rolling around, and it's apparently one of the needles or something, and it broke off. Oh. Now I've had this thing. How long have we had that, Curry? Four, five, six years. Maybe, maybe four, five, six, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I bought it for like 150 bucks at Costco. And it was really a good one. It had a timer on it. It had everything, right? Um, but it took hellish long to make coffee. First, you had to wait for the water to warm up. And then you had... So uh, I said to myself, well, my curry finally broke. All right? So I get a hold of Instacart and I have them go over to Costco. And I found a new one called the Supreme Plus that they're selling. It's for $135 at Costco, but it has a, uh, so you get, it, it has a discount. So I got it for $103. Mm -hmm. And this thing comes, we get it. And it's better than the old one. I mean, it's simpler than the old one. It doesn't have a clock and it doesn't have things like that. But that doesn't really matter. What it does is it just... You open it up to put the thing in, to put the K cup in, it turns the machine on, okay? And then you close it shut and you can already pre-program what you want. And so you push your pre-program button and it starts making the coffee really fast. 
Mm. And it was terrific. And I found all that out. And then I, just for the sake of it, just because I couldn't stand it, I, I, I went online to see if Amazon had anything that would replace that little section. And sure enough, for $22, they did. Oh, Netflix is down for thousands of users worldwide. Yeah. What? Um, Netflix what? is down. Well, wait, we'll get to that in a second. Let me finish my curry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. No, it just came. I have a question dinner. about your curry so story. I, so I, so I, this thing was 22 bucks. So I said, to hell with it. You know, I'm going to spend that. Well, I won't spend that much going out because I never go out. But anyway, I had 22 <laughs> bucks. So I ordered this thing. I have a fully functioning. My old machine is fully functioning again. You just replace oh. the whole thing. Nice. And that's it. Uh, and I didn't know that. I could have had that. That thing could have lasted for another 20 years at this rate. Yes. Well, now I you know. Okay. So I don't know if you remember this or not, but former 23-year employee of Costco, um, I know the inner workings real well of that place. And I thought your story was going to go another way. I thought you were going to say, you took that sucker back. They gave you 150 and then for 103, you ended they up with more money, which uh, you yeah. really could have done and still can do. You actually I, still could. I actually, it's strange, but I think once I did that with a, uh, with my vacuum cleaner, with the Dyson. Yeah. And I took Absolutely. it back and I had gotten it a hundred bucks off and they gave me the extra hundred bucks back. Yeah. You could take that old curry back. They'll give you a full refund on that sucker. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In the full price. The old one? They yeah. Won't, they won't go back to my, they won't go back to my receipt and see I only paid $103. No, the new one. No. He said the old no, one. No, they'll go back, back to the old one. Yeah. They'll go back to what you paid for the original. They'll yeah. look at it membership as long as your membership hasn't changed it'll be there they'll look it up they will and you say hey this thing's fucked it's not working anymore wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, but this thing electronics be the full amount back. i i would imagine they have a time limit no they do not <laughs> only electronics they, 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 yeah only on, I, only on I computers took, i think I that's took, right i took okay. back some lounge chairs that have been in my backyard for 10 years they yeah. started to rip I brought them in. They gave me all of my money back and two brand new chairs. Wow. <laughs> story after story after story of people of what they've done. And Costco looks at that as the cost of doing business. And they know that nine times out of 10, you hand over the cash or the cash card or whatever to the people yeah. who return the item. And they go right back around the fence and they go and spend the money in the store. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and what it does is it solidifies in those people's heads Oh, Costco is the place to buy stuff because it is no hassle. Because you can and trust it. They yeah. net way more yeah. than they'll ever But need. Alex, Alex, the old coffee maker, if you bought it at Costco, we could probably turn, trade it in. I'm going to start bringing my empty wine bottles back in. <laughs> <laughs> I want to join that team. <laughs> oh, man. Man, oh, man. Jeez. Um, but uh, what were you now? What were you saying about Netflix? Well, it said thousands of users are down, and I just went to my Netflix, and it's working. So forget oh, uh, it. Uh, okay. The world Did you changed. see where by the year 2026, it is predicted that Disney Plus will surpass Netflix in subscriptions? Really? Wow. Yeah. They got a pretty good thing over there. You know, uh, I, I huh? just don't have to keep paying for nine different services. It drives me crazy. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've got, let's see here. What do we have? Well, we have net, the ones we're paying for, because we're not paying for HBO Max. Well, here's what happens. I subscribe to HBO, right, on my cable. So I get right. HBO Max. Yeah. I get a thing now, it says from AT&T, congratulations for buying a new phone and signing up to the service and blah, blah, blah. As long as you've got your phone, you've got HBO Max free. Mm. And I'm going... Yeah, but I can't take it off my subscription at the cable company because if I drop HBO Max, they'll say it's not part of package and then they'll move every other price yeah. up. Right, right. So I'm, okay. I'm stuck with it. And also, um, I bought app, uh, I, uh, when I bought my Apple TV, I got a year of Apple TV free. Well, oh, it ran right. out. And so I'm paying like five bucks a month or something for a service really that sucks. And I suddenly I bought a new uh, a new phone 
I should, I think I can get three months of Apple TV free, but I'm already paying for it. You know, I mean, it's just, it's insane. It's insane. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I want my HBO Max for free. You know, they should just say, well, here's money back. You know, we'll pay you every month. We'll send you a check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck in your plans. That's going to happen. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Didn't AT and T owns HBO, right? Do they? They own, they own Direct yeah. TV. I don't know if they owned HBO. I don't think so. According to John Oliver, not for long though. Isn't there some sort of merger? Yes, happening? yes. This is yeah. what happened. There's, no, they were sold to Discovery. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. HBO. Yeah. Yeah. Which means, uh, uh, does that mean we're going to get the uh, below deck Mediterranean for free or something? <laughs> <laughs> that part of that system? I, I oh no no uh, uh, below deck Mediterranean is what network is that on? Do you know? Is it Hulu? Or no 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 no. It's a it's a and E. A and E. Yeah. yeah. And A and E is owned by um, NBC, I think. I, think, they're I don't think so. Yeah, but but all, I don't know. The, who the, well, below deck Mediterranean is on uh, is on Peacock. Oh. It is. Yeah. So. That's NBC. Yeah. You, do you guys know what we're talking about? A little bit, but not the whole thing. By the way, do you like the, la the last episode? It, I, it, not the one that is just out, but the one that and technically ended the season. Shaggy. Um. Still in season three, so oh, no. oh, oh, I see. Well, in what season, are you talking about? we're talking about below deck Mediterranean. Oh, well, there, there's a hot, really hot blonde on on the last season. So hope you get to it soon and buy some <laughs> lotion. Yes, uh, Mike. According to the Wizards at Wikipedia, A and E Networks uh, is an American multinational broadcasting company, 50-50 joint venture between Hearst Communications and the Walt Disney Company. Oh, geez. Oh. Wait a minute, a AT&T? No, a and &E. A &E. Oh, a and &E. no, Oh, a &E. okay. So they're Walt Disney. Is there anything that Disney doesn't own at this point? Yeah. No, A&E History Lifetime, all owned by Hearst Communications and the Walt Disney Company. Oh, in jointly. 50-50. Because that's why I don't think we're getting we're getting below deck Mediterranean and, and those mm -hmm. shows, the A and E shows on Disney Plus. Right. Okay. But Disney also owns FX. They own uh they own uh, yeah, they bought up uh Fox. Oh, right, yeah, of course. Fox, it, yeah. It, not yeah. Fox News. No, that no. still is Rupert Murdoch, but Fox uh is 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 Disney. As predicted by The Simpsons in like 1990. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it was. I saw an interview with Seth MacFarlane, and it seemed like he was he was talking he was talking to who was he being interviewed by, and they were talking about the fact that they were both under the auspices now of Disney, but only part of them, because the Fox TV part is under the auspices of. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, 20th century television is now owned by Disney. Yeah. Yeah. So, but is the Fox TV network owned by Disney? I think that was the thing. The Fox TV network still owned by Murdoch. Yeah. The movie division is but owned the, by but Disney. The TV division is owned by Disney. So, yeah, but but really, Just McFarlane has, has Fox on one end, you know, Murdoch on one side and Disney on the other side for Yeah, the broadcasting arm is still owned by Murdoch, I believe, but 20th Century Studios, which produces many of these TV shows, Simpsons, Family Guy, now all Disney properties. Why don't they just send out a major memo about all of this so that we don't have to sit here trying to figure out what's what? Because most of America couldn't give a shit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Only comic book fans care. They're the only ones who care. Okay. Who now the X Men and the Avengers can be together because of this merger. And that's all comic book fans care about. Well, who owns Taco Bell now? <laughs> Isn't Taco Bell still packed in KFC and Pizza Hut and all that? Yeah. That Is that the, the yum, yum brands? Yeah, it, 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 yum, yeah. Yeah. Which is Pepsi. Y yum brands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is headquartered in my city. Is that right? Really? Yeah. 
They got the naming rights for the new uh, basketball arena downtown. It's yep. called the Don't KFC tell me it's Yum called the Yum Arena. Y- yummy. <laughs> no, it's just called the KFC Yum Center. Oh, <laughs> That's fantastic. I don't know. These naming rights are ridiculous. I mean, whatever I have. For three decades, well, my very favorite team has played out of the Staples Center. So, I mean, I get it, but. Well, is, is uh, Yankee. Our football is, stadium. Shecky, our football Yankee stadium, stadium used to have the name, has what? used to have the Papa John's thing on there until uh, Schnatter got got into trouble and and they dropped the the Papa John's from the Cardinal Stadium for football. Yeah. So what are they now? It's just called Cardinal Stadium. Uh, it used to be called Papa John's Cardinal what, Stadium. Well, now Yankee Stadium is still Yankee Stadium, right? Doesn't yes, and Shea Stadium is City Field. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a brand name. The Giants and the Jets are the Meadowlands Stadium. They don't okay. have a naming. Okay, they didn't sell the name. And same with Madison Square Garden for the Knicks and the Rangers. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm not. Is anybody here from well, not from the Bay Area today? Nobody from there. Yeah. Hey, oh, I can't remember are, what Glenn. they call the Giants Stadium anymore. Well, I mean, Giants Stadium was, was Pac, Pac Bell, Bell. When, yeah. I, when I left. It was Pac Bell. Yeah. It then became what? It's AT and T. AT&T. Was an AT&T park, and now what is it something else now? Yeah, oh, something uh, else. Well, the uh, Cowboys play in AT&T Stadium. What? It's Oracle, Oracle Park now. Oracle Park. Oh, God, I hate, <laughs> I hate that son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. I wonder how much it costs to get naming rights. A lot. It's, it's a bunch. Let's see. Let's see I think it depends on the stadium. Well, yeah. I guess what's his name from Oracle? Uh, that asshole. Um, what's his name? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, he, he's very proud of his koi pond. 20, 20 years, $200 million. <laughs> How much? Wow. 200 million? That's, yeah. that, that's, that's, a, uh, that's about uh, what? 20, what how many, how many, how many years? 20, 20, 20 years, 200 $10, million. $10 million a year. $10 million a year. That's a pimple on the ass. Yeah. 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 Oh, isn't it Larry something or other? Ellison? Larry Ellison. Oh, Ellison. Ellison. Yeah. Biggest jerk in America. Just an asshole. <laughs> I don't know. Big, America, that's a that's a which cool which, which uh, it was I always said was a perfect example of that that money has no taste of who they let hold on to them. You know, I mean, yeah. guy like Larry Ellison can make that kind of money and be that kind of person. Uh, you know, Bezos has kind of turned into that person. Mm. You know. I think I, I don't think he wanted to send a TV star into space. I wanted to see how much weight he could send into space. <laughs> how could we kill a ninety-year-old man? Yeah, how you we... know, I, I do love the fact that we live in a world where Captain Kirk was in space. I mean, that Absolutely. is pretty cool. Well, I love you know that. something? You know something? Sulu is still alive. Why? Yeah, is that, he, yes, why send he... him up. I would have sent if it were me. I would have sent Kirk and Sulu yep. and is there anybody? And, and the... Michelle Nichols is still, is she still alive. She's still alive. No, yeah. she died. I think. I think she died. She? I think she died. I think they're all dead except for. No. For. Uh, but Shatner and Sulu hate each other. It's yeah. very dangerous to be uh, out on uh, out on the world. Yep. Mich- Michelle Nichols is still alive. Go yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, don't forget Chekhov. He was. On and if you really want to send up old people, Marsha Hunt's still alive. <laughs> yes, I read a few years ago an interview with William Shatner that maybe what was she the other, the other day? Four. The other day she became one hundred and four. Uh, wow. She is she uh, and is yet another SAG after a member not being able to get health insurance. Health insurance. So you know, uh, oh, hello Andrew Deutsch. We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. He's connecting his audio. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Hey. Yeah. Nice to see you, my friend. I, I have two minutes <laughs> and I gotta get back into the meeting. Oh really? I just came to I just came to disrupt, screw up the meeting, and then leave. Okay, <laughs> good. Well that's okay by us. Did I, did I accomplish my goal? 
Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Always. So what kind of business have you been doing that's been taking you away from us? You know, we're, at, we're at a convenient hour. Go go to smartsoda.com and you'll see. Smartsoda.com? Smartsoda.com. Yep. Yep, new client that I'm deeply embedded with. Oh, incredible, I, incredible company. Smart Soda? Yep. How yep. is soda smart? Because it's it starts with alkaline water. Yeah. And there's no mystery. Well, the soda side of it, no mystery sugars. It's organic cane, diet sodas without mystery sweeteners and oh, flavored said, waters. Oh, oh boy. You've sold vitamin, me. vitamin and already, You've already done your job. I have. Okay. Where can you buy it in the East Coast? Um, there's Bear Burger restaurants where you are has it. There's yeah. a bunch of places in New York that have. Are they still in restaurants as opposed to? Being able to buy it's, it's a fountain. It's a fountain solution. Restaurants, convenience stores. We're in a bunch oh, of 7 Eleven. Listing we're in. it at 7 Eleven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, we, we're finishing a pilot program at 10 7 Elevens. We're rolling out to 500 of them. It's, uh, can you get find it, enough pilots to buy it? We can. We can. <laughs> They're a lot, and they can fly after they drink it because it's smart. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh, not those kind of pilots? Yeah. <laughs> See, Andrew hasn't been on for a couple of weeks because he's been busy. He has to earn a living. This is money in the bank for him. Uh, yep. But the only time he does come on, he does a commercial and then he goes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? hey, well, it's not a, this is a commercial break. Yeah. And, uh, you know, capitalism's capitalism. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say. Yeah. Well, I have but I, I am concerned about something, Alex. You know, there's yeah. a bunch of missionaries that were that were kidnapped in Haiti. And, and I'm, I just, I just want to know if anyone knows if it was a gr grammar error or punctuation in their prayers that they weren't protected. I'm just curious if anyone here knows. What do you mean, grammar <laughs> protection? I mean, well, they didn't pray properly because they got, yeah. you know, they were praying for protection before they went. And they all got kidnapped. Actually, I'm, I hear just, the, I'm know, looking I, for help. No, normally, <laughs> I'm not too hot for these religious groups, but these people were really doing. They were. Decent work. <laughs> Yeah, they were. Well, yeah. let's they're, send they're dog the bounty hunter down they're aid there. workers. But let's send dog the bounty hunter to go down and find <laughs> them. <laughs> now there's a plan. How good can dog the bounty hunter be? <laughs> when he, where still, is he when we need mail. him? What's his name? What? He's still looking for the mail. Long, yeah. he's still looking for the. Oh long yeah, that, the yeah. the fiance. Yeah. yeah. OJ I, still OJ still, still looking for killers too. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think that guy skipped the country way at the beginning and we're never going to see him again. I oh, yeah. totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, with his parents' help, by the way. <laughs> do you think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. I really do. I really do. Well, every now and then they bring him up on the news because they like to keep the story alive, you know, um, and they keep beating a dead horse. Um, <laughs> I don't really care. I mean, I, I just wonder, you know, I mean, this happens all the time, doesn't it? And it, it, we don't hear about it. Why did this become news? She was blonde. Yep. Yeah. What yeah. my claim is not that she was blonde, but one other factor that's even more important than being young and attractive. <laughs> no more than that. They had video on her. Oh, yeah. well, they had called the police. Yeah. A bystander had called the police because they saw the two of them fighting. Deshaun right. Davuti. Yeah. Uh, let's see who okay. Deshaun Davuti is. Because well, it's it, only audio, it says. Didn't he try last week? That was someone else, I think. Well, oh. Deshaun Davuti, uh, go uh, take a take a hike. Wait a minute. If it was the ramble, I'm saying that was John Larkin, but. Hello, are you there, Fashad? See, he's calling from Djibouti. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for submitting. So, sorry, sorry, yeah. I missed. Sorry, I missed. I got my two minutes in. I got to run. I got to get back in. Right. Right. Go back. Good to see you, Bye. Goodbye. Go and don't belch too too much on the soda. <laughs> now you're taking all the fun out of it. Uh. <laughs> you like I'm a pet. I feel like I'm a tag team with Andrew. He's yeah. out. I'm in. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve Bender, how you doing? I'm good. I was tutoring, so I had a Zoom tutoring session, so I think it was late. 
Yeah. Hey, Alex, did you get that uh, uh, private message I sent you this morning about Live 105? Yeah, the Live 105, <laughs> the station that I was mostly associated with at, in San Francisco for many years, um, um, uh, changed its name to Dave. Dave. Dave? <laughs> really? Yes, yeah, seriously. That has actually been tried before and failed. In fact, I think it was tried once in San Francisco. They named it, you know, some name like Lucy or Bob or something. <laughs> why why, why do you call the radio station Dave? I don't know. You know? Well, you we know, have one in Louisville. It's called Jack FM. Yeah, there I've heard yeah. there's lots of Jack out there. But Dave, that's a... <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, I mean, they're looking at names and went, Jack's already taken, but Dave isn't. Yeah. <laughs> But in the, in the comments in that article, somebody actually mentioned you and, and was talking about, you know, back in the day, how, how great of a station that was. Uh, it was. It was, you know. <laughs> but the time passes. I mean, you say, okay, they got rid of Live 105. Goodbye, Live 105. It was gone years ago. They changed mm -hmm. format years ago. And they still call it Live 105. It's not the station it once was. Even mm. with me gone, it still had a certain format of being progressive rock or whatever. And then all of a sudden, one day, you know, somebody else decided, ah, oh, let's play this and let's play that. And now it, you could take the Live 105 from last week, and it's probably no, not that much different than Dave. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you are the last, your generation is the last ones that will ever worry about radio there's so many other ways to listen to content now on your phone yeah. podcasting yeah. nobody needs terrestrial radio anymore you know and well you know i i describe the radio business uh as being um uh, kind of like a snake that loses its head and thinks because its tail is still moving it's still alive well it's like kodak yeah. you know you never thought kodak would go away and Never, <laughs> never. Well, right. you, you know, a lot of these companies like Kodak uh, lasted longer than you could possibly imagine. I mean, uh, Shecky, you have some information on this. How far back does Kodak go? Uh, at least 1900. Wow. Yeah. And well, they lasted until when? A couple of years ago. No, they're still, they're, still, uh, they're still in business. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're not making they, film, but they've got other products. I mean, do you now remember when eight? everybody in America had a brownie? Yeah. Hmm. But what about Polaroid? Polaroid. Yeah. Polaroid, yeah, but Polaroid was a gadget that came and went. But it, it, in it, somebody once referred to it. Who who referred? I can't remember. Maybe it was Penn Gillette, somebody like that. It's like referred to. A Polaroid is a slow mirror. <laughs> um, That's good. But, uh, uh, but a lot of people made a lot of money owning stock in Polaroid. Yeah. Sure. But I mean, Kodak, Kodak's been around, as you say, since probably eight, the turn. Eight, 1888. Alan. 1888. Uh, so a few years ago, they got to the point where they weren't relevant any longer. I think they still, they don't even know. I think they still do make film. They are still a going yeah. concern. Yeah. Well, seems. they can make film, but who's shooting movies on film yeah. anymore? Tarantino. Here's, here, here, and here's the problem. You want, want the biggest one that I remember. Do you know the company that made the biggest mistake and didn't know how to keep up with the, with the future? Sears. Sears, by Sears. far. Sears. Yeah, Sears catalog was the thing everybody in America waited for. Yep, 500 pages. 500 pages, and you look in there and you see something you want, and then you order it from Sears and it yep. gets sent to you, right? Yep. They didn't think great. they didn't think when the internet came along, why don't we do this online? No, All that's Amazon. Amazon is is the modern version of Sears, yep. maybe yes. with a deeper catalog, but nevertheless. If Sears had done that, they'd still be alive today. And and well, the thing Sears was what Amazon is trying to build right now. Well, country spoke. Wait a minute. Vernon's got his hand. Yes, Ver, Vernon. You know, Radio Shack, if 
filed for bankruptcy three times, but they're still at RadioShack.com. Yep. Uh -oh. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have one blockbuster left in the United States. Yes. Really? really? But in, these were uh, all these were all short-lived organizations. Isn't it in Alaska? It is. I'm, I'm not going to be alive to see it, and I think some of you may be alive to eventually see it. But one day somebody's going to say, "Did you ever think Microsoft would go out of business? <laughs> did you ever think Apple would go Apple. out of business? Or did you ever think that that Facebook would close do close its doors? Yeah. Or McDonald's? And yeah. by the way." The lifespan of businesses today is shorter because they get replaced faster and faster. Yeah. It's, it's exponential, you know. So I mean, um, we're, we're going to see Pontiac. How about that one? Right. They don't make Pontiacs anymore, do they? Pontiac, yeah. Oldsmobile, that's gone. Yeah. Gone, gone, gone. Yeah. And General Motors almost went bye bye. And then almost. there are all the other cars that all look alike. Yeah, they I mean, all look alike except for their logo. <clears throat> was that I heard yeah. a discussion? Was having a discussion on one of these shows I was watching. It might have been Letterman with Seinfeld or somebody, but they were talking about the fact that in the old days, when the new cars came out, everybody waited for it. Every three years, there was a radical physical change to the yeah. cars. Yeah. In between, they make the fins bigger, they make them shorter, you know, do small stuff. But they, but like in, I think it was, was it in August or September when the new cars came out? September, and, September, yeah. October. Yeah. yeah. And one week it would be uh, GM and the next week it would be Ford and whatever. And you would go to the dealers. You wanted to go to the dealers to see these new cars. Yeah. And they, you could tell a Ford from a, from a GM, from a yeah. you know, Pontiac, from a Chevrolet. Today, you can't. You can't. Mike? Except the logos. It was the traveling circus of the car shows to the, all the big cities across oh. North America. And you'd go to see the car shows and the, the, yeah. This, yeah. the new model spinning on something with a hot, beautiful woman looking at it doing that. The reason I got, I got dinner on my plate was thanks to GM because every year they would bring Motorama to town and my father would play in the orchestra. Oh, cool. And I don't know, anybody here remember Motorama? Sure. Uh, I know what it is. It oh, was at the World's Fair in 64. Uh, the, wow. Motorama. Well, Motorama used to go from town to town for about maybe a week. And they would set up, and it was a big show. There was singing and dancing and everything. And, and GM would then showcase all their new cars. And everybody went to Motorama. It was a big deal. It didn't cost you money to go to. You just wow. had to wait in line to get in because the lines went around the block. But I mean, that was big. Dude, you don't remember Motorama, do you, Marjorie? Because she's the yeah. only one here besides me. <laughs> no, but so, that was the name of the pavilion that GM had at the 64 World's Fair. The yeah, Motorama. but I think that was about at the tail end of that. Because when I was a kid in the 50s, Motorama was a big deal. It evolved car shows that we were just talking about that that kind of evolved into the next phase yeah but i mean ford didn't have didn't didn't have a you know no ford was at the 64 world's fair too mm -hmm. yeah but, they they, were at, but no what I'm, I'm i'm talking about that though i'm talking about they didn't have like a motorama that went oh. around to all the cities across the united states this i have to look at my pictures because in vancouver in 86 expo 86 was there and i was there Ford had a pavilion, GM had a pavilion. No, no, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact no. that it was this show, this yes. show they mounted, you know. Uh, Entertainment. And what was it, Shecky? You can, you can fill me in on this. There was a company that used to make films. Jam the, Handy? Jam Handy, was that it? it used to well, make- Well, they're the ones that made all the industrials. The industrial films. Yeah, and they would, they literally had- people on staff they had musicians they had they had songwriters everything yeah. <laughs> and well they used to travel I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of it right now but they would do those industrial shows like at radio city and right. places like that right. right where the broadway performers who weren't working said i made my entire year's salary just doing that show right 
And there were also songwriters who wrote for it, many of whom went on to write big Broadway oh, big, shows. Oh, big name songwriters. Yeah. And they would uh, they would do these shows that would go from town to town promoting what product? Whatever product might be. Yeah. And they made them more money off of that <clears throat> than they did work in Broadway. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, a, you know, it, it used a, all those, quote, out of worker working actors and singers and there's dancers. A, there's a documentary about it. That's where I found out about it. And I think it's on maybe well, Prime Video. Well, Steve Young made the documentary. One of our writers. Right. Right. Oh. And, and what's it called? Do you remember? Hey, I'm going up on the name. Mike, <laughs> you should know the name of this. I, when I'm writing down now to go research it, though, now that you just said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was Steve Young and our editor, Deva, and I can't think of her last name for the second. Just look up on IMDb and look for Steve Young. Because he wrote a book and then it became a documentary. Yeah, where he it's, it's, went and interviewed the people who appeared in these shows, and, and I don't think like, I don't think Marjorie watched it because she. I'm not interested in that. Uh, and then when she's that resistant to it, I don't try and force her to do it. So I watched it, and I thought it was a fascinating documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's um. I, I keep wanting to say everything's coming up roses, but that's not the name of it. it was, I mean, it was everything's coming up something. Something like that. Yeah. 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 But uh, I mean, the, the, these were uh, the, the way in which they used to promote cars. Uh, but they were also, they were like two hour shows for the, let's say the Ford distributors who would be invited to see them. Yeah. The sales reps. Yeah. Yeah. What I don't understand, okay, is when I was younger and I was doing uh, uh, oh, Midnight Blue here in New York, mm -hmm. it was a sex show. I did it using video cameras because it was, you know, where, every, and then I, they said, well, can you do, you know, I, I went to them, I, I'll admit to this now, I went to somebody and I said, what would I, what would you say if I told you I could produce a porn film for you? Because all these porn film producers, we're shooting everything on film, okay? And I could shoot it completely on videotape for $350. <laughs> and they said, that's ridiculous. Nobody does that. You don't do it on videotape. You do it on film. It costs us about $35,000 to turn out a porno film. I said, I'll do it for $300, $350. <laughs> so they gave me the money. And a couple of weeks later, I delivered them a complete porn film for $350. Nice. Um, make oh, and, well, you know. and, and then I said, uh-oh, what I've done is I've let the genie out of the bottle. Mm. And Under everybody seven. started making uh -oh. them on video because it was cheaper. So what you got, you went from porn where sometimes they were spending, they were actually spending $100,000 on some films. I mean, they were, they were bragging about how big a production they had. And all of a sudden, um, they make them for 350 bucks and the whole business cheapened. And where is this illustrious film? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, is it still on? It's on YouTube. <laughs> I have a copy of it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Put it on YouTube. <laughs> no, I can't. YouTube, it's hardcore. Put it in a private thing and send us all the links. <laughs> of course, you know, it was hardcore by that, those days standards, which makes it almost not hardcore at all, you know, so anyway. But, you know, all things are, I don't think businesses are going to last as long as we once, as they once did. You're not Well, because also they all get bought up by co other companies who then bankrupt them. Okay. Yeah. But you, you had a company like MGM. Good example. Company like MGM. When was MGM formed? 1934. 24. 24. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long did they last before they were sold to some big major corporation? 68, 70, maybe yeah. somewhere around there. That's, that, they lasted a long time. You know, Kirk Kerkorian bought them and then sold it, bankrupted, then bought it back, sold them, bankrupted it, you know. 
Well, I remember when the day finally came that MGM went from being a big studio, massive studio, to a three-story building on Wilshire Boulevard or someplace like that. They became yeah. basically a holding corporation. Well, they sold out the Culver studio, <clears throat> yeah. you know, which are probably now, I haven't looked at it, but probably apartments now or something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just, I, no, the, 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 and, and 20th Century Fox became what's now known as Century City. Century City, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I actually, okay, sorry. But these were companies that lasted a long time. Today, but you I, saw CBS is selling Studio City now. Are they? Really? Well, they already have, I think. Or have they? Or they already have. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that was originally the Max Senate Studio. Then it became Republic, and then CBS eventually bought it, and yeah. now they're selling it, and it'll become apartments or well, the building that's there now though was built by CBS, right? It was meant no, to... it was built by Senate. Oh, it was built by Senate. It was the original Max Senate Studios. So they simply built a new facade mm -hmm. around it. Well, they thought. built a better facility around it, of course. Yeah, but yeah. that's also what was Republic Pictures. Wow. I didn't know. I that. have a question for the New Yorkers. Um, Silver Cup uh, Studios in New York mm -hmm. used mm -hmm. to be Silver Cup Bakery. Yeah, yes. right. My mm -hmm. dad ran that bakery back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the best thing about that was coming off the 59th Street Bridge and you could smell the bread baking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, they kept, I, they I, kept I, the sign. They kept the sign. They did. You know, yeah. and they kept the name. And I think that's wonderful. You know, it's, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. Apparently, my dad went back there in maybe the 80s. Now, did they make that? Did they make Silver Cup Studios out of the um, uh, 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 Silver Cup Studios out of the um, Baker. Silver Cup ba Bakery? Yeah. Well, yeah, they stripped the bakery out. And just because I know there was out in that area, wasn't there the Astoria Studios? Yeah, the old that was the old Paramount Studios. Okay, so Astoria Studios doesn't even exist anymore, or, or wasn't made into other studios. Oh no, no, it's a filmmaking, it's a TV facility, filmmaking facility. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you say that word film? Does and, film exist? Uh, <laughs> well, so I, I used to work for a company, yeah. and every day we would get all the. TV stuff. The information came in in the morning, and then by I don't know what six o'clock, six p.m. We had to process all the film, so you could see it on TV. Mm. Kind of like dailies. It's kind the of daily. like yeah, huh. probably well, multiple multiple times a day. I mean, do you really, people don't remember this, but in the early days of television, when they did television news, they would, it, up until they'd have to 19... send the film by airplane from, let's say, Vietnam or something. Yeah. yeah. Or they would just shoot the film, say, here in New York, and then they would have to send it to their studios and have it processed fast enough to make it to airtime. Yeah. 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 Uh, sure. And then all of a sudden, video came in, videotape, portable <laughs> video not uh, video, video had been around for a while. And that changed, that was a whole game changer for the business. Yeah, but now it's satellite. You know, it's you all wireless. Sri Lanka and satellite it up and it's on the six o'clock news. In HD without any hey, well, look, lines look. or anything else. <laughs> right, we, we've got, we got Charlie, he's in Texas. We got Jeff, he's in Connecticut. Yeah. We got uh, um, uh, Vernon, who is in... Uh, Still in Virginia. It's still in Virginia. Uh, we got Len Lafrisco. He's out in California. Mike Chisholm's in Canada. Western um, Canada. Shecky. Shecky is uh, <laughs> over Queens. in Queens. Steve Bender's down the street from me. And Marjorie's <laughs> in the next room. Uh, and we all look like we could be next door. Yep. Yeah. That's so, I mean, that's died. Yeah. And it's clear. It's yeah. incredible, it really is. So when you talk yeah. about radio disappearing, quite frankly, I mean, if I was buying into media, I don't think I would buy a radio station. No. What are they worth now? Commercial real estate and radio stations, I think, are right out right now. <laughs> is it happening? 
about the states where conglomerates are buying radio stations as well? Because up here in Canada, like Virgin and Bell Media, Bell Media is kind of like the Bell is yeah. up here. They're they're all buying radio stations up here like crazy right now. For well, what? Why? Why? Yeah, I'm not certain. I mean, you know, like, because even, like, you know, even if I can make the argument that the great thing about radio was is that. You could it, you you didn't have to have a, a internet. You didn't have to have a line. All you had to have was a was a, a receiver to get the signal, mm -hmm. and it had a reach everywhere, right? Yeah. You know, one stream went out to everybody. Okay, yeah. uh, whereas on the internet, you got to be well. We now have internet in the cars. Okay, yeah. they pick up Wi-Fi. And can pick up any of those, uh, you know, your favorite podcast or this program while you're driving. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, where does radio fit into this? I don't know. Who are still drive time uh, DJs, and apparently the the morning drive time is still a pretty major thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Alex, you may even remember the two guys that are on uh, KSJ, Lamont and Tonelli. Yeah, they're still on. You know, I often wondered about that. I, I heard about this because they finally got into the Radio Hall of Fame in the Bay Area, which kind of makes my induction look like nothing. Uh, cheapens it. Uh, but they weren't very good. You know, they weren't terrific. And they've been yeah, on for 25 years. <laughs> yes. How come I only lasted 12 years in San Francisco and I was a big fucking deal? You were a big fucking deal. I mean, I'm not bragging about this. I was. You, know, you were a big deal. I mean, you, yeah, your name was everywhere. Everybody yeah. knew who you are. Yeah. When I mention your name now and they, I say, well, you wouldn't know Alex Ben. Oh, Alex Ben, of course I know Alex Ben. Really? Okay. Yeah. But uh, Lamont and Toenail, uh, <laughs> they've... 25 years and I'm going, yeah. I guess you just got to lay low and be mediocre. Yeah. And also probably not make as much money as you possibly were making at um, K-Rock or whatever. Okay. You know, 105. 105. Yeah. How much at, at, as I made at, at uh, Dave. Well, I still say that's money. what happened to you at um, Sirius. What, I was making too much money? You were making too much money. Well, how, and they, how bad yeah, off were 25 the grand. Well, if you knew what I was making there, it wasn't that much. If they but, couldn't afford my, you know. But you weren't Oprah Winfrey or you weren't, you know, that kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Mike. See, but the thing is, though, unfortunately, you fall into this category. Fortunately and unfortunately, athletes, pro wrestlers, there are certain actors, same thing. The person that paves the way for the person that really blows up many times is the unsung hero oh, and that's well, you. I've, I've said this many times people, people said do you have any 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 advice for people coming up in the business and i said don't be the first to do anything there it is. you know there it is. if if being the first to do everything was was going to get you somewhere i really would have gotten somewhere but the guy who came in second and second. did what i was doing was howard stern okay he didn't come up with an original idea. Never had an original idea. He drove idea on the road before. you paved, Alex. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not bragging about that, folks. I'm disgusted by the fact that you can't be the first at doing something and everybody goes, bravo. You know? No. You know, I was the first one ever to do a podcast. Okay. And if I, I wrote to these guys that have this podcast journal or something, and I said, well, you know, I was the first one to do a podcast. And they say, no, you weren't. <laughs> and I said, can you tell me anybody that did it prior to 1970 and 1999? <laughs> and they went, well, that really wasn't a podcast. <laughs> Later on, blah, blah. But what I did is I came up with a program. I put it up on my website every day so the people while I was out of work could hear it. And then yep. some guy I knew invented a little program that people could download and then they put it on their machine and every day it would download the show to their to their computer. What does that sound like? Yeah. Sounds like iTunes. But I was the first <laughs> and nobody believes me. <laughs> and, uh, there's, there's five or six areas that you could use your career as examples of. Like I think about fans mobilizing and, and either, whether it's for playing pranks with your Danielle Steele story or, or protesting when you got fired in New York. Like there, these are things that happened on a much bigger scale to Stern later on. But for some reason, 
you're not you're you're the guy that paved the road and it's it's frustrating to say the least when people don't uh don't uh pay respect to that well but that's because <laughs> darren went around telling everybody i stole from him so yeah <laughs> You know, I couldn't help. But you you remember that, Shecky, when I started doing shows from home? Oh, yeah. That yeah. was at least two, three years before anybody even conceived of doing the internet. I used to listen to those things. Huh? <clears throat> and then yeah. we did we did internet TV with Play TV. I remember that, too. And nobody ever did it did that before then. You know, so, you know. Don't Does ever... It give consolation to have people here who at least acknowledge that and give you that now or is it like no i want the fucking money and i want the <laughs> money. i'd rather the goddamn money yeah <laughs> by the way you know what's interesting right now more people on this program right now than are actually tuning into the show live <laughs> yeah so uh you know let's cool. face it stern sits in his alex bennett room doing a show from there now yeah, yeah. <laughs> making exactly. hundred million dollars a year or whatever yeah. he makes. Yeah. And yeah. I bet he doesn't ever plan to go back to Sirius to use that big studio. No way. Because no it's just like Marjorie's not going to go in more than two days a week. To her office. <laughs> I will never set foot in an office again. There is no way. Not happening. There's no need for an office anymore. Nope. It really isn't. Why should companies pay a fortune for an office in in you know on Madison Avenue here in New York? you know yeah get a p.o box with that address so i'll tell you what i what i did uh, when i go to my uh, when i go to my dentist i walk by a building and every time i walk by it i go it's so anonymous now and nobody remembers but i do because i grew up with it 485 madison avenue what's that address rick cbs that was the original offices of cbs mm -hmm. Uh, 385, four, 385 Madison Avenue. 45. 485 Madison Avenue. 50th Street or 51st or yeah. 52nd. And I worked at WMCA was a couple of street, a couple of blocks up on Madison. Uh, and I, uh, you know, that, to me, that was history. That was radio. When I listened to radio, I knew I was listening to 485 Madison Avenue. And then they moved over to Black Rock and that was it. And they've sold Black Rock. Have they? Yeah, they're out of BlackRock now, totally. So where's CBS? The um, broadcast center of on Fifty Seventh Street. Really? Yeah. I mean, they don't they don't need the big building anymore. Of course, that whole building, even though BlackRock was CBS, they there were other business. Oh no, they didn't have the whole building. Yeah. Well, CBS, but is I also believe in they Jersey. own the building. Yeah. I think they own yeah, the property. Yeah. And it's a beautiful building. Yeah. No. Just gorgeous. And the next door to that is Pink Rock, which is where they put their satellite people. Oh, okay. And then, you, but then if you remember, ABC oh, was down the block, and they're not there anymore. And I is in New Jersey. They have a little, of, ever sell Thirty Rock, or do you think Thirty Rock is so iconic that they would actually keep it as a as a landmark? Well, Thirty Lexington. Rockefeller Center will always be Thirty Rockefeller Center. Whether it's sure, but they've but, also built it out, NBC or whatever you want to call it, that they've moved more people into that building. Okay, so they're consolidating everything into that place. Gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. And they always keep changing the sign at the top. And now it says Comcast. What was it before this? GE. And then RCA, of course. And then RCA before that. Yeah. So, but that's the change of time. You know, that's what we put up with. Look, we don't have buggy with factories anymore. And how many delicatessens are there left in Manhattan? Oh, I was just That's reading 15. today. There were 1,400 of them there were 14 back in the day. There were like dozens now, if there were even that many. And I'll bet, the, I'll bet Steve 15. Bender knows where every one of them are today. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was just at Sarge's yesterday, actually. Oh, oh yeah. that's a good one. There's, that's a, better. there's a Third <laughs> Avenue Deli. Second, Second Avenue, Avenue. Second, Second Avenue, Avenue Deli, which is not on Second Avenue anymore. No, it's moved. It's a different location now. And then it's Ben's. And Ben's, ben. Sarge's, Katz's. Katz's. But what like, fine. In fact, today, you know, I, one of those pages on Facebook is about old delis. 
and there were pictures of Fine and Shapiro on 72nd uh, Street, which is now, of course, long. Will you please not long gone. tell Marjorie that it's Fine and Shapiro, not Fine and Shapiro? <laughs> in fact, was, we went in there one day, and I and I said to the lady, I said, "Would you please tell my wife the last name of this place?" <laughs> and she said, "Shapiro." <laughs> Shapiro, I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. Sure. You don't have fine in Shapiro in Philadelphia. <laughs> Do you know what a you know what a pastrami sandwich costs now? Oh, oh 20, uh, bucks. 20, 20 bucks. 25. 25 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you remember when you used to go down, we'll t go a little over here. Remember when you used to go down down to the uh Carnegie Deli? Oh yeah, it's the you biggest how, sandwich in the world. Not the best, but big that sandwich it. was. You couldn't put it in your mouth. No, you they had, had a sandwich named for the Woody Allen movie, the Broadway Danny Rose, which was yeah. like pastrami, corned beef, tongue, and hard salami. <laughs> oh. and it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> Did it come with a defibrillator? <laughs> and everybody yeah, had, to the take, name of a everybody had to take half their food home, <laughs> and you never ate it as a sandwich. You had to pick it no. apart and just no. eat the meat. Jeez. Sarge Can I have two extra pieces of bread to make a second sandwich out of it? Right. Sarge has a challenge. That's they have what they call the monster, which is like $45. And if you could eat it, you get it for free. <laughs> you know, you could eat it. <laughs> I think it comes with two yeah. aspirin as a side. Yeah. Wow. Well, I used to love the, I, I love the Carnegie delicatessen for that 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 food. It was terrific. I like what stage was the one better. down the street from Carnegie? What was the one down the street from Carnegie? The stage. The stage, the stage right? Page yeah. was better. Hey, listen, yeah. that's it. That's it. We, we, you know, again, I think the only time we talked about anything serious was the first five minutes of this show. And what I love about this is that our our topics du jour are always things like talking about delicatessens, and, <laughs> you know, and the reason why RCA they don't do they exist anymore? No, RCA. No, no. they do. No. They're, but they were bought by somebody though. But in name, bought they by GE. And then, uh, then GE sold. I think GE the sold this. huh? Or Somebody whatever. Saw. Yeah. Anyway, GE hey, used to be in Connecticut. Acquired by GE in '86, and now Charlie has this given you any desire to come to New York City just for the pastrami? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll stay here. How's everything down there? How are your abortions going? You doing something? <laughs> oh, God. You know, oh, I'll send. In fact, we got a got some extra coat hangers here, right? We can send out the Charlie. Coat hanger industry is thriving. Yeah. yeah. How do my eyes look, everybody? You look Beautiful. good. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody Wait says it makes me look younger. Yeah. I want to know what Marjorie <laughs> says. Huh? She she Marjorie. said to me last night. She said you are looking younger. You look away. Ah. You look away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Jeff. He does. He looks alive. Yeah, he's, he's younger alive. than spring that time. Is good. Yeah. He does. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Vernon. Always good talking to you. Oh, okay. Lafrisco, wonderful having you here. Mike Chisholm, thank you. Rick, as always, thank you. I appreciate it. You really add to the mix. And Steve Bender, if you weren't there, I would not feel it was a show. And Marjorie, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> anyway everybody say goodbye and wave goodbye and i'll wave goodbye too. Yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks for doing this we love it bye. thanks everybody we appreciate it okay bye